<laughs> hey guys, it's Kelly, and today I am so excited to bring you an all electric tour, and that is this 2021 Audi e tron. This is Audi's first electric SUV. It has a range of 222 miles. It's beautiful, it's expensive, it's Carmon Blue. Let's tour it. Before we get started, if this is your first time joining me, hey, I'm Kelly and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and for families. So if you're wondering how badass this car is and every little detail about it, find a different tour. That's not what I'm going to deliver. I am going to deliver my review of this car from a mom's perspective and I'm gonna put car seats, strollers, cups, diver bags, everything else in it as well. And that's how I put it to the test. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and comment below about which car I should tour next. Even if it's not your typical mom car, I want to explore them all. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the exterior because this is a completely redesigned SUV. It's not an electric version of the Q5. It's totally different body style, but it is still a very typical looking Audi SUV. It looks very similar to the other SUVs, but obviously we have a lot of nice electric vibes in it. To start this completely chromed out grill, it's very monochromatic. I think it looks beautiful. I can't say enough good things about this color. You know, normally at the end of my tours, I tell you to stay tuned until the end because I'm going to build my own. I will still do it, but for reference, this is the one that I will build because this color combination is beyond exciting to me. Very excited about it. Let's move to the side. Some beautiful wheels. Beautiful, beautiful 21 inch wheels. They look awesome. And then we just really move into some really subtle body lines. It's very sporty. You know, this is an all electric SUV, so it's competing with the Tesla of the world. We've got some beautiful chrome that goes around the windows and on the roof rails. And then we kind of go into this back and we have some wraparound taillights that start right here. And then we come all the way across with this light bar right here. We've got the beautiful Audi badging here, the e-tron badging, mm, it's looking good. So a little bit about the electric car. So this one, like I said, has a range of 222 miles. The charger, very nondescript. It's right here, we have the little e-tron badging. You just hit this button and it opens right up. Okay guys, the party does not stop. Come on into this beautiful interior. We have this great saddle brown leather. Let's start with our door panel right here. We've got some suede that goes nicely into some chrome. We've got the brown leather. You know what, it's kind of a lot going on. This interior is definitely a statement, so there's obviously other interiors available. The side cubbies is what I really want to talk about though, because they are nice and deep, especially for the size of a car. Got like a simple modern water bottle right here. I mean, that's a freaking cup holder is what that is. What's over here? Oh, that's another freaking cup holder. You know what that's called? two cup holders. Um, unfortunately, spoiler alert, those are the best cup holders in the whole car. So <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second. As far as my driver's comfort is concerned, the car is very comfortable. I was expecting nothing less from Audi. I'm a huge fan of their other SUVs, especially the Q7. So I was expecting to like a lot of my driver's comfort features. Let's get you into the interior though, and we'll talk about the infotainment system. So I think one of the hardest things about an electric car is knowing if it's on or not. I'm being 100% serious. So like foot on the brake, I hit the stop start button. And like the car's on, but without like having that motor start up, it definitely takes some getting used to. Now, if you're wondering about the charge of the Audi e-tron, it works very similarly to a lot of other electric cars. So if you have one of the fast charging stations, either at your house or at a public charging station, you get about 80% of the charge in the first 30 minutes. That last 20% takes a little bit longer. If you were just to regularly plug it into your house, like the same outlet you'd plug in anything, it would take about 10 hours for a full charge. So just kind of to give you an idea of that. So we've got the vehicle on and then we kind of go into the infotainment system. There's screens everywhere. Like someone get me some blue light glasses. There's screens for days. Digital display, screen here, screen here. A little overwhelming, but I actually like how it's kind of separated out because a lot of the times when you have, well, here's the example. So all my climate control is down here, right? So normally this would be buttons. I like that the climate control is pulled out of here instead of being put into this display because this is a lot easier to access. So we've got heated seats, ventilated seats, a lot of nice bells and whistles, heads up display, automated cruise control, blind spot. I mean, all the safety features that I would, ex would expect to find in a 70 plus thousand dollar car. Now where the Audi falls a little short for me, well, is in this situation. 
First of all, this thing is very cumbersome. It takes a little bit of getting used to. The shifter is bizarre to me. So we've got the shifter here, then you have this like little silver toggle. So you have to like toggle up and toggle back to put it in the different gears. The park button's on the side. Then we move into what can only be described as some of the most disappointing cup holders I've ever seen. Volkswagen owns Audi. Like they're cousins, right? These cousins did not inherit the same cup holders. Volkswagen has some of the best cup holders on the market. These are absolute garbage. Again, I'm giving the car the benefit of that. This is a simple modern water bottle. That's thin, that's nothing. Barely fits, not secure. There's only two. There's this very awkward little thin, oh, this is the wireless charger, okay. Like just not a lot of cubby spaces. And then I move into this. My phone's sticking out of it. It's not even deep enough for my phone. At that point, at that point, give me another cup holder. Give me one good cup holder. I don't need this little center console. That's nothing to me. Now, I understand that people are going to come for me in the comments being like, she's so hard. All she cares about the cup holders. That's what I'm here for. I still like the car. I'm just saying we should have better cup holders in my $70,000 car. Is that too much to ask for? Apparently it is. Okay, guys, let's chat a little bit about our infotainment system. We've been playing around with it for a bit. Very, very um, user-friendly. We love this. So when we're entering a navigation, okay, we got gotcha. you. You can actually write down your navigation down here. So I can literally just write where we want to go. Take us to Starbucks. S-T-A-R-B-U. C-K-S. That's pretty fancy. Um, some other fun little things in the car is I love when these high-end cars have fun ambient lighting. Like that is just the kind of personalization I look for in my car. So we go to light and visibility. We check out our, oops, we check out our interior lighting. So they've got like some, uh, you know, some pre-selected ones like solar, makes a little orange, Caribbean. You know me, I'm a DIYer. I want to really choose my own color. All these freaking options. What is your mood? You know mine. And then you can control the brightness and make it brighter or lighter. Obviously, this isn't going to show up in the middle of a uh, parking lot at 11, 17 on a Tuesday. But at night, driving around, that would be pretty cool. I also love the camera angles in this car, guys. They're so nice. So when you put the car in reverse or when you hit this park sensor button down here, you can obviously see your surround view camera, your backup camera. You can also see a 3D image of where your car is on the road right now. How cool is that? That's pretty cute. It's, we like this display. It makes this very satisfying fine click sound when you touch the screen really like it. We love how it goes into our climate control. And then, you know, we've talked about this. It's a little bit clunky, but you'll get used to it. You'll get used to it. Okay, Will said to make up for her lack of center console, we do have this like additional one and that goes deep. I mean, that is bigger than the center console a hundred percent. So, you know, good little place to store valuables. Like I'd like throw like my wallet or something in there because it's kind of nondescript. Okay guys, here's a shot of me in the second row of this Audi e-tron. Let's talk about my second row amenities. First of all, this is pissing me off. Window only goes that much down. Maybe that's not a big deal. Is that a, comment below if that's a big deal. Took us off guard. What I do like is a sunshade. We love a sunshade, especially in only a five passenger car. The side cubbies are still smacking back here. We love to see that. Awesome. Awesome. We do have a panoramic sunroof. It does fall a little bit short right here. It doesn't come quite all the way to the back. We've got some climate control down here. Everything's touchscreen, heated seats in the rear as well. Two USBs down there. I was kind of surprised they weren't those USB-Cs. A little faster charger, but that's okay. As far as the car seat setup is concerned, it's exactly what I expected. We've got lower anchors in both outboard seats, tether anchors across the bench. I'm gonna put two car seats in it and then try to sit in the middle. We'll see what happens. What's this? Little baby cup holders. You know those fit. Honestly, better than the front. Honestly, better than the front. Headrests are not removable, but they are adjustable, and I was able to install a forward-facing seat securely. Let me grab my car seat. All right, let's chat a little bit about the car seat setup. So today I have installed a Graco Extended Fit Forward Facing and a Baby Mesa Pumpkin Seat, obviously rear facing. I tried to sit in the middle of them. Didn't have a lot of luck. The seatbelts are a little wonky. There's a little bit of overlap. The outboard seatbelts are rigid, so they're a lot less flexible. Um, I did install 
the Mesa with the latch and then the Graco with the seat belt, the latch system is very easy to use. The latches are exposed when you take off these little covers. It's tight. I couldn't fit in the I couldn't fit in between. I think the three across could be difficult in this car. I'm not going to call it impossible. Um, I just with this with this particular car seat combination, it's a no go. Again, if you have any questions, I highly recommend consulting a certified child passenger safety tech for your specific car seat setup. All right, let's look at the trunk. So today I brought an Up Baby Cruise stroller, and it fits great. I was able to put it horizontally. It didn't totally fit this way as much. I mean, I could probably take the seat off and finagle a little bit more, but still we obviously have plenty of room. Some nice little side compartments right here. I think that's really awesome. That's what the magic really happens. Look at this cubby. Got our spare tire underneath there, but that cubby's exciting. You know what that is? That's soccer cleats in there. That is your picnic supply. That makes this car mom friendly. Power tailgate. Overall, I like it. I mean, it's only a five passenger car. It's not made to be a huge family hauler, but it works for two car seats. It's super fun to drive. The technology's awesome. And I think it looks pretty cool. We're honestly having a blast in a freaking half is what we're having. This Audi e-tron, I mean, electric cars, not, I mean, hybrids, whatever, they drive fine. Electric cars are so much fun to drive. I mean, it's so zippy, it brakes great. It's got different driving modes, so you can kind of customize it that way as well. Obviously, if you wanna be a little more fuel efficient, go for it. If you don't, because it's an electric car and electric's cheap, have some fun with it. Love how it drives. Um, and yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. Comment below what you guys thought of this Audi e-tron. If you have any other questions about electric cars, I'll do my best to answer. I'm here in actually St. Louis, so the middle of the country, where I would say compared to the, like the coast, we are a little behind as far as the electric car world is concerned. We just don't have quite the charging stations that some of the other major cities do. So they're definitely popping up more and more. I think electric cars are the way of the future. I don't think they're going anywhere. And I'm excited to see other brands start putting them out and really to give the Tesla a little bit of a run for its money. So yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Hey guys, let's build my very own 2021 Audi e-tron. Okay, so let's start with the trim. I'm actually going to go back one. Okay, so we've got three different trim options to break down here. The premium starting at 65, the premium plus, and then the prestige. Okay, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go to the premium plus because even though it's like $9,000 more, this sound system is amazing. The Bang & Olsen sound system is awesome. I... I feel like I need the adaptive cruise control with the lane assist. Well, I don't need anything. I love, love, love ambient interior lighting packages. And I want the ventilated seats. So for that reason, I am choosing the Premium Plus. The Prestige offers more things, but it's not that much more technology features. So that's kind of why I decided to just stick with the regular one. Lots of fun colors. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go with this teal, which is the color that I did. This is not rainbow. I was excited, but it just shows you silver. But then they're saying, like, you could add a special paint color if you wanted to. I thought it was going to be, like, rainbow. You know, everything else, I just feel like if I'm, like, I'm going to be in, like, this, like, electric car, like, I want it to be, like, a cool color so everyone knows it's, like, an electric car. Right? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go with this, this one because I love that color. And I'm going to do the interior color that I toured because I thought it really did look amazing. But here are the different color options that you can do. Uh, when you get the brown color that I'm getting, you have to get this exact trim level or this trim, which is kind of annoying. But anyway, oh well, I like the interior color enough. So that would bring my Audi e-tron, if I were to build one, to an MSRP of $76,490.